In this demo video, I'm going to show how the multi-dose can be used in combination with the CALPM, that's Chemically Amplified Resist Parameter uh, Resist Model. We're going to demonstrate how these can uh, be used to show the effect of base diffusion on the isofocal CD of a semi semi isolated or semi dense line. So we've got a 45 nanometer line on a 120 nanometer pitch. Okay. We've got dipole polarized illumination with an NA of 1.35. Over here in the CALPM parameters, what we've got is the um, dose, I mean the uh, diffusion for acid and the base quencher are set as variables and over here we have that the base quencher is going from 0 to 30. So the idea here is that as we choose different values of LQ, we want to trigger a redose to size. So on our FEM control, when we find our nominal dose, it chooses a separate dose for each value of LQ. We're keeping LA, your acid diffusion, fixed. And what we want to see here is that as the base diffusion increases, keeping everything else constant, we should see a change in our isofocal CD. When we simulate it and run, we get this plot. This is our bosungs. As you can clearly see, the isofocal CD is moving up as the base diffusion, LQ, is um, moving down, uh, moving up. So let me just show you how I made this plot. Once I ran it, I had the bosungs here. And when I first plotted it, uh, it was in color. And uh, I rescaled the axis here to 100. And then I went to view and I said no cycle, black, no symbols. Okay, so just a, this was just a quick video to show how the multi-dose can be used. It also shows how the um, CALPM uh, is used to demonstrate this concept of acid and base diffusion um, affecting the isofocal CD. Another thing that might be interesting is to do this for a few different acids. So let's do it for um, let's say acid of a diffusion of 5 to 25 in steps of 10. So now we're also, this is a trigger variable also, so on the FEM control we need to update. And this is important, very important that you see that we need to do, have uh, this multi-dose capability in order to do this. Because you can't change a resist parameter and look at the effects unless you redose to size. So now when we simulate, we've got a bunch more simulations to run. Luckily the CALPM is very fast. And what we're going to hope to see is uh, also that the acid diffusion affects the bosungs. So here's our bosungs. This time we'll put these on matrix plot Y axis, the different values of LA. We'll scale our plot just as we did before and color it the same. It's hard to see the isofocal with the colors in the way. If we just make everything black. Now I'll zoom in with this button here. 
and let's see you can see that it was we go from bottom to top that the isofocal is moving down and as we go from left to right the isofocal is moving up so this also supports the hypothesis that it's the difference between the acid and base diffusion that controls the isofocal the lower the base is relative to the acid diffusion the lower the isofocal is the higher the base is relative to the acid diffusion the higher is your isofocal CD